don't overcom or ghost com, you know? Don't, don't say Killjoy is somewhere on left side. Don't say Killjoy is somewhere on B. Say say stuff that make sense. Killjoy close. All right, so you're playing Valorant and you're hard stuck bronze, or maybe you're hard stuck gold or plat or diamond. You know what? It doesn't matter because I'm going to be talking about how to go from bronze to radiant in just 30 days. Now, this is, of course, not picked just from myself. This is research, thought out, talk to radiance, the best of the best. These are tips with hard research. This isn't just me talking out of my mind, <laughs> or that would be extremely hypocritical of me. I wouldn't do that. No, this is supposed to be legitimate and supposed to be good. Now, if you just started playing Valorant like this week or a month ago, especially with Overwatch Rising, and this is also free to play, people are bouncing games, then all I'm gonna say is change up that crosshair, find a sensitivity, stick to it, and don't move while shooting. That's got you covered. But for the most part, this is for players who are already used to playing Valorant and have been playing Valorant for a while. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with the crosshair placement. You probably heard this a few times but you need to understand how important it is now one of the core elements to master in Valorant is that place of crosshair not just when you're holding an angle which is what I see often it's while you're moving while you're managing the map while you're using abilities everything it's always about the crosshair placement whether you're peeking a corner or holding an angle your crosshair should always be on that same level the enemy's head and nowhere else now why is that important just in case it hasn't gone through to you yet it's because you want to be able to react as quickly as possible without moving your mouse or aiming too much. That's what's going to cause those whiffs. Remember, you want the enemy to move into your crosshair, not the other way around. Crosshair placement is so important that a YouTuber in Radiant called WestJet, you might know him, he's my boy, has said himself that Valorant is 95% crosshair placement and 5% raw aim. And I honestly think this is 100% true. He's not the only one who said this. So now, how exactly do you improve your crosshair placement? One of the ways you can train your crosshair placement is through deathmatch. Instead of trying to get as many kills as possible, start using a sheriff and start aiming for that head with crosshair placement. Know where you're going to peek, how you're going to peek, where to place that crosshair, and you'll naturally feel you're getting better when instead of moving the mouse, you're just clicking it once. You might actually see Optic Yay play death matches with a Sheriff often, and that's just how he warms up before streams because, well, it's an effective warm-up routine. Now, speaking of which, if you warm up just by the range or death match, it's important to warm up your aim before you start queuing for comp. Like, everyone has their own routine, find a good one, but just know you should. Now, pro players warm up between 30 minutes to an hour before comp, but for you, a simple 10 to 20 minute warm-up should do the trick. Even 10 minutes is more than enough. A death match, some range with a consistent pattern and that should do the trick. Now, the next thing is movement. Valorant is rather slow paced if you compare it to something like Call of Duty or Apex Legends, but the fact that is Valorant still needs movement. It's still important to get used to movement in Valorant to make your way onto different areas of the map and get some cool clips like this one. You're oh so insane. God. Or get out of an awkward position like this one. What is that movement? <laughs> Next up is the utility usage. I feel this is the biggest thing in low elo. Like anything below silver, it's that utility usage being off a perk, man. Hold. So you might have godlike crosshair placement, but it's still not enough. You gotta get to radiant means you gotta get used to different abilities and how to use them properly. Learn how to use your abilities and take advantage of them to outplay the enemies. You have to train them. I can't go agent to agent, but let's say you main Viper. Just learn a couple lineups just so you have the versatility. It doesn't mean you have have to be a lineup Larry and be all nerdy about it. No, but you should know each agent and the basics. What counters me? How do I counter things? Learn each ability on each map. If you can only jet smoke forward without knowing how to curve at all, you're just limiting her kit by 50%. Think about it. You're limiting that ability by half its potential because you're only smoking without the whole unique part of curving. The only thing worse at low rank than ability usage gotta be the comms. Bro, you guys gotta talk. This one is one of the things that most people forget or they do it very wrong. Valorant is a team game and thus communication plays a crucial role. Running with your team with voice chat turned off might work in bronze, but just the minute you hit silver, it's just gonna stop working. You know, unless you're smurfing, you gotta get a mic. It's just one of those things. Don't be this guy. 
moving on from the deep fried mic, I also gotta say, don't overcom or ghost calm. You know, don't say behind you, don't say on your left, don't say on your right, don't say up, don't say down, don't say 360, don't say let's rotate into teleporter and go left. Don't don't say weird stuff. You guys didn't understand anything I said. So how do you expect your team to? It doesn't make any sense. Don't say Killjoy is somewhere on left side. Don't say Killjoy is somewhere on B. Say say stuff that make sense. Killjoy close. Right? Quick, concise. Not, I hit Killjoy 80, she's heaven by the way, probably going down the stairs, around back, steel bomb, and then plant it. Also, I need to go grab bubblegum. Next, gotta be your game sense. Think actively about where you're gonna play and what you're gonna do. Are you going to play aggressive and peek at an angle, or play passive and hold the site? Or how are you gonna help your teammates push a site or successfully retake and defuse? Your game sense and the pre-planning. There's only so much you can pre-plan, there's a lot you gotta act on the spot, but having zero knowledge or zero foresight would also hinder you. Now, there's no definitive way to increase your game sense, and even though there are different Valorant training modes and aim trainers like aim labs, for example, what you're gonna notice is that's not gonna help your game sense. The only thing that actually increases your game sense is by, unfortunately, playing the game. But, however, even though more matches that you get in will, in theory, improve your game sense, it's not one-to-one. -one. You have to record your game, watch them back, watch pro players, what are they doing differently that you can implement, and study. It's kind of nerdy and sweaty, to be honest. Maybe Maybe we should just all touch grass, but you're watching this video already. Let's keep it a buck 50, okay? You want to improve, you're gonna have to study it. That's the only way. I would say that's the biggest thing, especially after plat, maybe diamond. Your mechanical skills start gonna start falling off, and that teamwork that makes the dream work and those strategies, good communication, positivity, is gonna come through just training, practicing, grinding, and studying. Now, speaking of grinding, while it might sound cliche, there is actually truth to it, right? The reason why someone has 10,000 hours in the game is usually gonna end up being better than you. With like 10 hours in the game. There is diminishing return. There can be a bronze with 100,000 hours while Shroud with 1,000 hours still got signed. Like that is possible, obviously. But there is something to be said about grinding. However, I would like to put my own little twist on it to make it a little less cliche. I call it mindful grinding. Grinding Valorant by just booting it up after a long day of work just to get your mind off things and playing comp isn't gonna get you very far, unfortunately. This mindless grind where you just queue into queue into queue without thinking isn't the play. You have to take a deep breath, you gotta study up, you gotta continuously, okay, I played that wrong because I did A, X, Z, you know? I could improve by doing Y, Z, B, whatever. Okay, that's terrible examples, but you get the idea. You can only improve yourself, you can only control yourself, you cannot control the enemies or your teammates. So you have to be mindful while grinding. Mindless grinding is the iron who's played Valorant for seven years when it gets that old and is still iron because they just play to get their mind off things, right? They're just playing just for fun, basically. Basically. But if you're playing ranked, you want to have mindful grinding. Another thing worth noting is while you might think playing with a 5 stack is better because you have better synergy maybe with your 5 stack, the chances of encountering a smurf on a team is actually a lot higher on five stacks because so some people use five stacks to boost their friends so i would be a little bit careful like if you compare that to solo or duo queue your chances of playing against smurfs are equal to your chances of a smurf being on your own team as well which is kind of funny if you think about it but it's partially true so if you're playing five stack you know all of you are bronze together while the enemy team could be three bronze and two people trying to carry them putting you at a pretty big disadvantage but if you're solo or duo in queue they could be a diamond on the enemy but a radiant on your smurfing it's not the ideal situation but it's kind of true it's kind of true but those are my general but very specific at the same time tips to go from bronze to radiance biggest one definitely improve on what's your weakness record your game study and have mindful competitive cues